It's an interesting question actually. My daily routine consists of trying to work out how the hell to manage everything on each day, you know? Um, I have lots of children and um, quite a complicated life and it's quite a mess. when I was seven and grew up going to private schools and um, boarding schools from the age of seven. So I had one of those traditional English middle class upbringings. Um, I had a very, I have a very, um, uh, oh. my mother's an opera singer and, um, and, she's, uh, and she's always supported me, uh, which is a euphemism for trying to make me into a musician. amazing mixture of things. He was a BBC Tonmeister uh, and he was one of the Tonmeister when Stockhausen had the BBC Symphony Orchestra improvise in 68 I think it was. Uh, and apart from that he's also been an organ builder and um, mostly though he's been a computer scientist. maybe 14, 15, quite intensively. Um, the person that I improvised with was someone who introduced me to lots and lots of things. We improvised together, he was a percussionist. Bachake and Zanakis I know, and Finnessy I know came from him. Um, he would like hold an LP out of Zanakis to me and say, you have to hear this, and I would say, oh, okay. We played the two pianos together as well, and uh, that was quite an important thing.
And I started very early with composition. Like I studied with Feldman in 86 in a summer school, which was obviously for a 16 year old quite an intense and unusual experience. I saw him bring people to tears. A not very nice person in some ways. Um, I mean, as a teacher, certainly pretty, pretty tough. At the time, I thought I could never stop composing. And then when I did stop, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I can stop composing. That's it. That's over. And I've never been tempted again. I know how hard it is, and I'm so critical of composers, I couldn't possibly be a composer myself. I'd, I'd criticise myself out of existence. You know, it's very biographical in a way, isn't it? I, one, and one thing I really like about our life as musicians, you know, you, you and, and me in our different ways, is that, is that you see through your work a trace of your life. And you, you, you always associate, both in a superficial way and also sometimes perhaps in quite a profound way, your, your work with what your life is doing at that time, what else is happening in your life. You know, I look through the pieces that I played and it's... And it's it's an autobiography in a certain way, isn't it? You know?
body is not just a mistake. The body is not a mistake, but the body is where we are, where we start. The body is not just a mistake. We are geworfen, you know. We start somewhere, we don't start at zero. The body is not just a mistake. The body is where we are. Interpretation is a constant dialogue. We understand it with our ears, with our body, because in that interpretation, a world is created. body is not just a mistake. The body is not a mistake, but the body is where we are, where we start. that interpretation, a world is created. The body is not a mistake, but the body is where we are, where we start. We start somewhere, we don't start at zero.
I grew up not far away from here, so this means a bit more in the countryside here, 20 kilometers in the Black Forest, nice small village, yeah, a bit too small, a bit too, too nice, I would say. <laughs> I think it was piano first and my grandmother always thought that I'll get a pianist even when I was 18 she said it's nice you do a lot of percussion but aren't you, aren't you not a piano player? <laughs> I was with my grandfather very often in the orchestra and there was already somebody who stood up at the end of the line and he just holded the cymbals in his hand and did it. And I said to my mother when I was four or five, that's what I want to do and I want to have lessons with him. So that's what my mother did. She called him and then I went there when I was six or seven and he was a heavy smoker and alcoholic and really a sad, a sad man, I would say, in a way. But he teached me. So they asked me if I want to uh, join the group. I think it was in 92, 92. It's already quite a long time. It was Harry Vogt from, from the VDR. He asked me to do a recording of the piece. He wanted to put it on a, on a VPA recording with some orchestra pieces. And I started to work and surely it was super difficult because in a way the instruments, I didn't have the instruments. I tried to order them, which was nearly impossible. I tried to get in contact with the only player who played it at this time. He never answered. There are these histories behind, which makes a very strong attachment to the piece. At the end, I went to Bali, I tried to find there the instruments, I tried to find there the, the instrumental makers, and I took the instruments from there, and I tried to get the whole material together. My mother then bought me a snare drum, so I got this snare drum when I was five or six. It's a nice drum, I still have it. <laughs> 